Hey there YouTube, I'm Joe, you're watching my channel Ink and Iron, and today it's time for the can opener showdown, specifically multi-tool can openers, you know, not your standard uh, kitchen fare, this is my KitchenAid can opener, we'll use it as a point of comparison, I'm talking about, you know, the Leatherman Surge, the Victorinox can opener, uh, I got a Leatherman Free P4 with a different can opener on here. What I want to give you as a primer here before we start is uh, just the lowdown on what these can openers actually do. So the sort of quintessential style is what you'll find on a Victorinox can opener, right? Blew it up so that you could see it better. Got uh, sometimes a driver tip at the end, a cutting edge that is curved, and then a, um, I don't know what this is called, we can call it a tooth but it essentially grabs the can rim. Pretend this is the exterior of a can. It is meant to sort of grab the outside and then this blade plunges right into the can top. <laughs> Sorry, these are cardboard, a little finicky, but you move like this, right? Moving the blade in a shearing action through the can. The other style, this is called a, a push type lever can opener. There's also a pull type, and this is the kind you'll find on the uh, Leatherman tools. See so, yep. it? This one, same kind of deal. You want to set the tooth, right? And then this big old blade pivots, and you pull it backwards instead of pushing it. So this big cutting edge plunges in and out. Um, one advantage of this design, nice big tip for, for that initial cut. But let's get to the uh, video where I test like 10 different can openers. And uh, we are going to start, <laughs> weirdly enough, with this one. One quick honorable mention before we start, well, not really honorable. Here's the Gerber Center Drive. This is the bottle opener pry bar tool. And somebody in my comments said that this is also a can opener. I would just like to point out that even before testing, I didn't quite believe them. It's not advertised as a can opener, and for good reason. It is not able to seat on the edge of a can, nor is it able to penetrate the can lid. It's not sharp enough, it doesn't grab well enough, and it just isn't designed for this. It's a bottle opener. So if you want to see more from this particular tool, I suggest you check out my bottle opener video because this is not a can opener. Okay, now on to the real thing. Let's check out our first real can opener. This is the Victorinox Explorer bearing the standard Victorinox can opener. You'll find this on multiple Victorinox Swiss Army knives. This is one of their tried and true tools. So this one has good piercing ability, meaning it can dive into that metal to start the cutting sequence. It has a fine edge, which it retains after the cut, and makes easy cuts with good ergonomics. It doesn't stress out the wrist, doesn't make you take severe angles. The driver tip does stop the cutting motion as you push down into the can, but it's not much of a problem because it comes back up and slides forward easily. This is a push type can opener as basically all of them will be in this video with the exception of the Leatherman Surge, but that will be our next model. So that was it. That was the Victorinox standard can opener. Worked very well and easily and kind of sets the standard here. Next up is the Leatherman Surge. So this is another lever style can opener. However, this one is a pull model. So this one cuts in the reverse of the previous Victorinox and all the other models in this video. So it does grab the can lid well. It cuts well, but it just works backwards. It takes a little bit more pressure to get this going, and you have to adopt a slightly higher wrist angle, but it does leave the cleanest edge on the can that any of the other tools generated. The can was basically ready to, you know, hold paintbrushes or pencils or whatever you got, you know, as you need a, a sort of garage storage system. 
So yeah, the Leatherman Surge even finished the cut nicely, which is uh, surprising. Other tools struggled with this, and so I changed my cutting method later on in the video. But overall, the Leatherman Surge performed adequately, and I would be happy to have this can opener as a backup. Well, we were off to a strong start, but now we're moving on to the Roxon Storm S801S. This is a non-locking can opener design, has a very flat blade, and I was pretty skeptical, and then it only got worse from there. This has a very wide edge, very wide cutting geometry, no curvature, as you could see, that makes it a very poor piercing implement. You can hear it kind of clunking and just sort of busting through the can lid and as opposed to cutting it. It takes excessive force to do. It doesn't really put your wrist at an odd angle, but you won't be able to get a good rhythm going. Working your way across the can will be a sort of stutter stop performance. So yeah, this was easily one of the worst performers. I'm having to push so hard you can see the camera shaking. So there you have it, the Roxxon Storm S801S. If you're buying the tool for the can opener, you're not doing it right. Let's move on to the Gerber Suspension NXT. So I anticipated trouble on this model because of the pronounced driver tip at the end, and also the fact that the can opener blade itself was not very sharp. It really didn't come to an ed edge bevel to speak of. So with this wide edge, it has very poor piercing ability, has even worse cutting ability, and the uh, driver tip definitely stops the cutting action. This prevents getting a good rhythm going. It uh, took a pretty good amount of force to actually push it through the can lid as well. My wrist isn't in a horrible position, but trust me, I'm not having a great time. You can see my hand shaking a little bit from the amount of force I'm having to put into it. Not to mention, still a little bit fatigued from using the Roxxon uh, can punch, as it were. Turns out I wasn't able to finish this cut with this tool. That was more a user error than anything. I changed my cutting method in the upcoming model testing. But uh, I went ahead and finished it off with my trusty old KitchenAid can opener, just to, for the sake of, of brevity, instead of muscling it out with the Gerber suspension. Let's move on to a crowd favorite. This is the Leatherman Free P4. I was a bit skeptical of this one as well, given its small size. But as it turns out, the Leatherman Free P4 dedicated can opener has decent piercing ability. So it gets started in the cut reasonably easy. Also has reasonable cutting ability and you are able to get a rhythm going. The only hang-up here is a literal hang-up. You can see the friction between the exterior of the can and the tool is such that I have to shimmy my hand and kind of wiggle it across the top of the can until I'm able to make the next push cut. So yeah, it's, its only downside is that it's very small. So maybe Leatherman, if you're watching, the next iteration of the P-Series should have a slightly larger can opener, but overall it performed pretty well. Let's compare it to the SOG Power Access Deluxe tool. Uh, yeah, I saw that driver tip and you can bet I was skeptical, although this one does have an edge, as you may have seen. <laughs> I am definitely skeptical of that driver tip here in the video, though. I was pleasantly surprised. It had a decent piercing ability, probably because of that actual edge on it also had decent cutting ability. 
The driver tip, however, definitely stops the cut. Kind of throws off the rhythm a little bit, but not too badly. The ergonomics overall were okay, uh, but it's still bound by friction a little bit, similar to the Leatherman Free P4. I'm not sure what is causing the friction in this design. I couldn't really diagnose it visually or through experience, so if anyone knows why this tends to get hung up on the exterior edge of a can, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Overall, I'd say it performed about as well as I would require a dedicated can opener to in a folding pair of pliers. Got the job done. My wrist wasn't super sore, so it was okay. Next up is a tool that uh, I was maybe a little bit overconfident in. This is the Sfizza D10 model. The reason I was overconfident is because this is a very large tool, but it's sort of reminiscent of the Victorinox standard can opener, just in a larger size. So um, looking at that giant uh, edge bevel, I was like, oh, this this will be like the uh, standard Victorinox on steroids. And I was wrong. <laughs> Despite decent cutting ability and reasonable piercing, the um, blade, as you can see, is just not as sharp as a Victorinox model. It, it kind of doesn't cut the whole length of the blade, it kind of slips back in the cut. And so you make three steps forward and one step back, as it were. The Sfizza is a newer company. They were established in 2015 with their first Swiss Army knife. So they just don't have the same legacy as Victorinox. So I'm not super surprised that this can opener is flashy, but not quite as substantial as its competitor. I am reasonably okay with it. Uh, definitely performs better than Gerber's offerings, but um, overall, is it my favorite? Nah, I'd say it performs about average. Next is the Gerber suspension, the original suspension that I've had since I was about 16 years old. I may have touched up the edge on it, although I don't recall ever having used it to open a can. I've always had a can opener at home, so I'm not sure why I've sort of filed down the edge. I didn't make it any sharper, that's for sure. <laughs> so as you can see here, the Gerber suspension original can opener has very poor cutting performance, has bad piercing, uh, took a tremendous amount of force to actually drive it through the can lid, has a very wide edge without any real sharpness to speak of, and it requires a very high angle of my wrist to actually drive this blade into the can. Uh, I found it very fatiguing and um, overall a very demoralizing experience to uh, open a can with this. As you can see, I'm literally like warping the outside of the can. Look at that. I am gripping this so hard and leveraging so much force against the exterior of the can that I am warping it in the pursuit of punching through the lid. This is actually somehow worse than the Roxxon Storm. Not sure why, um, but boy, am I glad that they updated this tool. Oh, yeah. This one sucks too. <laughs> yeah, when the Gerber suspension next outperforms the original, it's, uh, it's a sad day. Alright, here we go. We're, we're dragging our way to the end of the cut here, finally. Yeah, don't use the Gerber suspension original for opening cans unless you plan on resharpening that tip. Because boy, it, it doesn't do you any favors. Look at that. Next up is the Victorinox Alox model, Pioneer, uh, Pioneer X, sorry. This one is essentially a widened version of Victorinox's standard can opener, and uh, surprise, surprise, makes it even nicer to use. Has good piercing, good cutting, 
you can get into a rhythm. It was surprisingly fast to use, maybe just because I'm following the Gerber suspension <laughs> with this tool, but uh, felt very comfortable. I think the Swiss Army Knife style tools lend themselves to being greater ergonomic can openers because you're not gripping, you know, a folded pair of pliers. You're gripping a handle that feels not unlike a can opener or bottle opener. This is easily my favorite of the bunch. It just performed beautifully and without any trouble, no rolled edges, no loss of sharpness. It's ready to go for the next can. And because we're doing showdowns, it's always good to have a control case. So here's my KitchenAid can opener. I'm not sure what model this is, but uh, it is a wheel style can opener. So it will use these gears to interact with the exterior of the can. It will send that beveled wheel into the can itself. And uh, you turn the crank. There we go, got through the lid, turn the crank. And in about, I don't know, five seconds or so, you get the can open. <laughs> It's easily the best can opener I've ever owned. I think I've had it for about 10 years and I am not looking forward to the day I, I lose it or it breaks because man, it, it just works well. So this is where I'm coming from. If you're opening cans every day, I highly suggest this KitchenAid can opener, not to shoot this show down in the foot. But uh, yeah, if you're, you're opening cans every day, highly recommend it. All right, let's talk top three and bottom three. Okay, time for conclusions. Bottom three, starting with, uh, let's say the worst one, Gerber suspension, the old one, did really horribly, was horrible to use, really no cutting edge to speak of. Uh, just above that, which is not saying much, the Roxon can opener, this straight blade is a no-go. Don't design can openers like that. <laughs> And uh, the top of the bottom is the new Gerber Suspension NXT. This is a different design than the original, and so it cut a little bit better, but not much. And this driver tip, a little bit big for what you need. And the top three in ascending order, I think actually Leatherman Free P4 did rather well. Um, the only thing not serving it is the small size. If it were maybe 30% bigger, I think it would help it. Next, uh, the Leatherman Surge, surprisingly. Leaves a really clean can, as you can see, and functions pretty well. But top of the pile, definitely Victorinox can opener. That's no joke, people. Uh, I'm essentially including the standard and the Alox version, because the Alox version is the same design with a thicker stock. But this is the easiest push-type portable can opener you can get. And uh, if you're opening cans every day, I might recommend just a dedicated can opener, but that's just me. All right, if you got differing opinions or other stuff I should try out, leave it in the comments. For more stuff like this, like and subscribe. All right, I've been Joe. You've been watching Again Iron. Catch you on my next one. Bye.